this next man, you can check out his uh, trivia shows across town. He hosts a lot of them. And also a very funny comedian. Give it up for Empty Bottle. I love it because Ryan has no idea who the fuck I am. So that's, I, he was like, what do you want me to say? I'm like, just tell him I host trivia around town. So for someone who just got that information just now, you did an incredible job, Ryan. Thank you. Give it up to your host, Ryan. Yeah, I got my name right, frankly. I uh, hope you all can see me. Uh, I know it's a little dark in here. Um, I always love working places where the keg cooler is louder than the applause. Uh, so thank you for that. This is actually my first time here since it became Hot Guard. I came here in the past when it was Bombers, and uh, they uh, they actually, the previous owners, uh, actively promoted the Johnson Weld presidential ticket 2016. Uh, so we have them to thank for the last few years. So. Fuck those fucking guys. And if any of you are done right now and you're here and you know them, again, fuck those guys. Uh, I, uh, oh, she made it back. I'm back. Yeah, that's dedication right there. I appreciate that. Um, anybody here not from Wilmington? Anybody visiting? Today? Oh, almost, but not really. It still works. I'm going to tell you, welcome to Wilmington. We do have our own built-in critical race theory lesson. Uh, just Google 1898 Wilmington, and every time you do, Ted Cruz gets a piece of his soul back. So I encourage you all to do that. Don't worry, this isn't going to be all black jokes. I know that's what you're thinking. Uh, Biggie didn't come back from the dead just to headline Hot Guard. Uh, but I'd like to think if he was coming back, he'd be here. That's because he loves beer and white people. Um, in my opinion, I don't think there are enough people who have had things that they care about destroyed right in front of them. I don't think that enough people have had to see something that they loved just die right in front of them. For me, I was, uh, I was 30 years old when I realized I would never make it to the NBA. I was 6'2", 260 pounds, not an ideal frame for a professional athlete, more of a black door guy at an Irish bar. <laughs> or a friendly police officer that doesn't carry a gun in a children's television show. <laughs> it's concerning, the more laughs I get, that means I'm right. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, all right. I, uh, you ever look at someone's GoFundMe just to see who's not a piece of shit? Is that, no, not a thing? Oh, there it is, yeah, yeah, don't lie, motherfuckers, you're all terrible. I don't really believe that GoFundMes are legitimate unless tears are involved when reading the description. Like if it doesn't say car accident or baby or cancer, I don't really give a shit. If you don't hook me in that first line, it doesn't really matter to me. I actually had a friend recently post a GoFundMe to help his uncles or his uncle get his cows out of impound. I'm not kidding, this is a real story. I'm from the country, so deal with it. Um, and I'm, I'm really, I'm hopeful that he does get him out of impound. I'm really more concerned about the amount of evidence tampering that's probably going on. Um, I'm sorry, that joke never lands. It's about cow fucking. I've really gotta, <laughs> I've gotta flip that around somehow. I don't know yet. It's about cow fucking though. Think about it, enjoy it in your own time. Um, <laughs> You don't like cow fucking, do you? You are not a proponent of cow No, I'm looking at you, yes, yeah. He's so serious, he's like, fuck that, I'm an environmentalist. <laughs> Only cows should be fucking cows. And I agree with you, that was my concern. That was what I was worried about. Um, so I have a daughter, she's five, she's wonderful, she's brilliant, she's beautiful. Um, she also has a dairy allergy. Um, I'm concerned that dairy allergy has turned her into a racist. Um, let me explain. <laughs> she came to me the other day and she said, Daddy, I want to be white like Mommy. And I said, oh, baby, why? She said, because chocolate is yucky and it'll make me sick. So now I have to sleep every night realizing there's a chance that my daughter may try to lynch me. <laughs> and it's really something, too, because I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing more frightening than having your five-year-old daughter sing God Bless the USA in a whisper Staring you right in the eyes. <laughs> right after you got done smoking the bowl. There's nothing more scary. 
And then she got out of the bed talking about grabbing them by the pussies. And I'm like, baby, we don't even live in a red state. Clearly there's some conservatives in here. It's okay, don't worry. It's not all political. It wasn't all black so far, and it's not all political. We keep it going. So I accidentally uh, bit this girl's clip the other night when I was going down on it. Time to transition. Five-year-old daughter, clip biting. You ought to see my set list. It looks like a fucking mass murderers. Anyway, the good news is uh, I found the gum that I was chewing on previously. Uh, the bad news is she does have a new piercing. Uh, I'm also down a couple of Tic Tacs. Uh, but it was orange flavored, and who doesn't love citrus? That's the thought I'm going to hopefully keep you with tonight. So I'm waiting on uh, I'm waiting on this app that I've been working on to be developed in full. It's called Blunder, and it lists the red flags and best attributes of each user. So, for example, um, you know, cheater. Bad with money. Terrible skin regimen. Because you have to exfoliate. Or has good credit, takes out the garbage, eats ass. <laughs> Mine, of course, would be all over the place. Simply ignores red flags. <laughs> Oral sex aficionado. That goes both ways. So you can flip it because it's like and the give and the hope. Did you get it? Did you? Okay, all right. <laughs> I have an audience of one tonight. I really don't give a fuck about the rest of you. Um, if worse comes to worse, I'm gonna get in that dog bed over there and take a nap. So either way, I'm fucking winning here, frankly. Um, let's see what else we got for you five folks. I believe in the law of attraction. You familiar with the law of attraction? No? She was not here before you, so we'll go to you. You believe in the law of attraction? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, if you guys don't know, it's, uh, you know, positive or negative thoughts can bring about positive or negative experiences. Um, and for me, I, I, for whatever reason, I attract some really, you know, weird shit, some terrible shit sometimes. And I, I don't mean like normal bad shit, like a car accident or erectile dysfunction. I mean, um, for whatever reason, I keep, the, I keep attracting women uh, that I have sex with where their dogs take shits in the floor right as we begin our session. It's really a concern, I mean that. I mean, and it's never right at the beginning, right when we just get started so maybe somebody can hop off, and it's never at the end so we can all finish happily together. <laughs> it's always, you know, right in the middle. You know, I'm, I'm just finishing up the second act, and here comes the fucking antagonist uh, into the story to ruin my fucking night. Um, really, I feel like I'm more of a Cyrano in that instance, but clearly, thank you, someone reads. I appreciate that, thank you. That's really nice. You guys pick up a fucking book sometimes, okay? They got board games over here. Let's get a library going, all right? Just get a little box, put it over there by the board games, you know, put some of the classics. Who gives a fuck, you know? Um, when is it appropriate to begin leaving the door open when shitting in a relationship? These are the questions that I've had uh, frequently, often, lately. Um, I used to believe it was when you finish up the second doggy sesh. Because typically after the, the first session, you're not really see the booty hole. You know, you're probably drunk or, you know, it was super domestic and, you know, you're not really getting in there like that. Um, I'm firmly in belief now that it's after one partner has come in the other's face. <laughs> I think after that, everything is on the table at that point. Um, some of you will hopefully experience that later on tonight. <laughs> Looking at this crowd, I highly doubt it at this point. I have uh, recently started enjoying this. I'm sorry. I, I like my mic stands uh, really like I like my own cock. Just, you know, long, silver, and with no girth. And <laughs> this one is just not helping me out. No, seriously, it's, it's, it's big. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna pay for that one later. <laughs> I uh, 
Oh, yeah. I actually just started recently enjoying this almond milk iced coffee beverage. I don't know how many of you are plant-based. Um, so now my, my cum tastes like a 30-year-old white yogi from Connecticut. <laughs> or so I'm told. I don't know that to be true or not. Um, that's what I just keep hearing. I heard the asparagus joke earlier, so I felt like that was appropriate to spend here. <laughs> so, as you can tell, I am divorced. Um, I know it's written all over my face. No woman can really tame this. <laughs> That's a note. It's a note for you, too. Um, I was actually married to someone from an incredibly wealthy family, and uh, really wealthy. And traveling with this family, uh, you know what? Traveling with this family, very different than traveling with my own back in the day. Um, pots of steamed chitlins and moist devil ham sandwiches were replaced with lobster rolls and chocolate covered strawberries in the back of a private jet. And I'm serious, it was amazing, incredibly lovely. Has anybody been on a private jet before? Don't raise your hands, because we'll rob you. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking, good, good. If you've not been on a private jet, it's amazing. It's incredibly luxurious. For a large man like myself, it's beautiful because you don't have to ask for a seat extender in there. Those leather seats are plush. You just sink your ass right in there. You fucking buckle yourself. It's amazing. They got fucking cookies and shit under the seat. The captain comes out. He's like, hey, uh, you have any questions about the route we're taking? I think we're going to go up over the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's going to be a really nice ride. Do you have any concerns? And every time, I like to fuck with him. Every time I was on there, I'm like, well, actually, I just got the phone with the NOAA. And I'm pretty sure we need to really take that vector over the capital and then make a hard left. Let's go over to Kentucky. Is that is that cool, Captain? And he's just looking at me like, I don't, I don't like black people. Uh, are you a rapper? No, no. But no, it's it's amazing because now I have to be expected to go on kayak and purchase a fucking coach ticket. And I'm like, you want me back there riding with those animals? Is that, okay, look at me. Is that a joke? The problem now is, is that my little girl now has brought that behavior to her own life. For example, a couple of weeks ago, we were traveling to Atlanta, and I rented this beautiful, first, who's a parent? Anybody a parent in here? All right, then you definitely don't get this. I rented a beautiful 2021 Chrysler Pacifica. All the bells and whistles. was hybrid, beautiful, beautiful fucking deal. Really proud of myself, super dad over here. 45 minutes into the trip, my daughter looks up from her iPad, watching Peppa Pig. And she begins to speak in a very proper accent, which is exactly what you want to hear of a fucking five-year-old on a long trip. <laughs> Peppa Pig is British for those motherfuckers who are not parents. Uh, good for you for not knowing that. She says, Daddy, this trip is taking way too long. Next time, we got to take the airplane. I said, Baby, I am so, so sorry. We spent all the airplane money divorcing your mother. <laughs> all we have left is 2014 Chevy Malibu money now. This is your fucking upgrade. For whatever reason, she didn't seem very pleased about that. But she'll get over it. They say kids are resilient. That's why I put that anti-lynching act in her room, just so she knows she gets jail time if she fucks with me. That 50% is some shit, let me tell you. More doors have been slammed in my house than I ever care to think about. Fortunately, she can't reach the plates yet, but I'm sure that's number two on the list. <laughs> so, statistically speaking, a lot of us in this room have probably suffered from depression. I definitely have. Uh, depression is, in my belief, one of the worst things a human being can ever go through. And if treated correctly, it can be short-term, like a UTI. Yeah, we know. Don't worry. I've seen your medical records. If not treated correctly, it can be much more long-term, like children. <laughs> For me, personally, you know, there have been days when things are real low, feeling real sunken. But I have a couple of Pop-Tarts. I watch The Mandalorian. I'm good to go by 9 o'clock, ready for the evening. And there have been other times when I have slept next to a bottle of early times whiskey and made love to crazy for months at a time. Yeah, yeah, right? Shit's rough. Fucking crazy for months at a time only exacerbates things, trust me. But no matter how low you may feel, how depressed you may think you are, never, never, and I mean this from the bottom of my soul, 
never perform oral sex in a strip club. <laughs> Unless you are a scheduled performer at that strip club, and you traditionally offer those services at a reasonable rate in a regulated economy, otherwise it's a bad idea. That's my cautionary tale for all of you. If you're gonna leave here tonight with anything, don't fucking put that in your mouth. <laughs> I'll leave you on this one. I, um, <laughs> I know the pandemic was really rough for a lot of people. Um, Zach Burke and I are actually twins. And, uh, <laughs> I'm locked down with some shit. And a lot of industries have a, they've had a hard time finding new people to come back in and work. And, you know, we were praising our essential workers and one industry really did not get enough praise and they really should have. And that's our beloved fast food industry. They really suffered because a lot of those workers, you know, they called in the manager Steven and said, fuck the doctor's note, I'm not coming back. And I understand the Wendy's and McDonald's have had an incredibly difficult time hiring new people and bringing them in. I get that. But I can't think of a legitimate reason, new or not, for you to ever forget my fucking straw at drive through <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I understand that you're new and maybe it's your second day and Nathan hasn't trained you on that. But that's not my fucking problem. You hand me the fucking drink, you know it's not a sipper. We're not at Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. It's got a hole right in the middle. Where's my fucking straw? You're gonna hand me the bag, which presumably has some over-salted fries in there, or, depending upon where I'm at, a biscuit. I'm gonna be thirsty as fuck. Do you really want me gagging and driving? I'm not in the passenger seat. There it is. Folks, my name's Benetti Bottles. Y'all have a great rest of the night. Alright, keep it going for Empty Bottles. The uh, longest, skinniest, soberest cock in comedy. 